Okay, in today's video tutorial, we're going to talk about how to render your animations in Maya. So there's a few steps that we need to do. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that your scene is ready to go. And then we're going to go to the Render Settings button, which is right here. I'll click on that. And you can see there's a few tabs at the top. And we're going to work under the Common tab right here first. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to look at the, the render path and make sure that your project's set up correctly. My project is set up correctly so that we can kind of follow the path and see that these images are going to be um, exported into my project when my project folder and is always going to want to render in your images right there. So if, if this doesn't look right for you, just go to File and then Set Project right here and make sure your project is set up correctly in, into the right folder. You can also double check by going File and then Project Window. And I can see that my project is set up correctly. And I can cancel right there. But it's always going to want to go into your Images folder, so keep that in mind. And so we're just going to go from top to bottom on this Render Settings list here. So the first thing that I want to do is I'll, I'll name this. So I'll just call this uh, Demo. And the image format that I prefer is TIFF. And so the TIFF format allows for alpha channels and it's a, it's a high quality render or high quality image format. And that, that alpha channel can be really important for compositing. If you don't need the, the alpha channel, PNG is also a good option. But again, I recommend TIFFs right here. Um, and so let's just continue to go down the list. The next one that's really, really important right here is the frame extension is set up to name number extension you can see it says single single frame so by default this is set up to render just a single frame and not an animation um, so what I need to do is I need to click on that and I need to go to and this is really important this name number extension right there and frame padding of four is good if you have um, a render that's longer than 9,999 frames, then you'll want this frame padding to go up to five. For most of us, four is totally fine. Next up, we have the frame range. And so for my renders, I prefer to set this up and leave this as it is for it to start with. So this is just gonna render from frame one to frame 10. And what I like to do is I like to test out my animation, look at it, see if anything's wrong with the render. If anything's wrong, I'll re-render it and I'll have only lost a few minutes rendering 10 frames. And if it looks good, then I will just set it to 11 and then, you know, to the end of my animation right there. Let's just say my whole animation's, you know, 123 frames long. So I like to do just like a little test batch before I commit to the whole render. So one to 10 right here. But um, this is where you set the, the range that the render is going to occur right here. And remember, this is going to kick out a TIFF image sequence that you'll need to kind of import into either Premiere or After Effects um, overall. So it's not going to kick out like an, a movie file or an H.264. It's going to be an image sequence. And so to start off, 1 to 10 is what I like to do just to test out the animation, make sure it's, it's all good. So next up, we have the renderable camera. Make sure this, this is not set up on perspective. Set this to render from your camera. And if you have multiple cameras set up, make sure it's the correct camera that it's rendering from right there. And finally, over here under the image size, by default, Maya has the setup to what they call HD 540, which is really just an SD format. Under presets right here, you can just click on this and we're gonna look for HD 1080. And so that doubles the resolution right there to 1920 by 1080, which is the standard HD format. And from there, we're good to go. That's, that's pretty much all we did, right? So we just started at the top, went down to the bottom right there. These other tabs right here under Arnold Render, this is something you can mess with right here. These are um, essentially in, in Arnold, these are the basically referred to the quality of each of these aspects of your render right here. And these are exponential sliders, not linear. So what that means, I know those are fancy terms, but what that means is the difference from three to four is a really big difference. But then when you go from four to five, five to six, seven to eight, it gets smaller and smaller as it progresses right there. So when you boost these up, you might see a big difference here, but there's diminishing returns once you start to push these sliders up too much. 
one other thing to remember is that when you boost these, it's gonna it's gonna elongate your render times. So you want to be a little bit careful in terms of how you manage that right here. And so what each of these sliders means is camera AA refers to anti-aliasing, and so this is one that yields some good results sometimes. Um, diffuse is the quality of the, the diffuse layer, the quality of the specular layer, those, those white highlights that you might see. Transmission, so if you have glass in your scene or anything like that, transmission might be a good one to look into boosting. SSS refers to subsurface scattering, so if you have that kind of shader on your scene, um, you can, you can boost that slider. And then finally, volume indirect is the, the amount of times a light ray bounces around. And so it just really depends on your scene. And so these are kind of things that you can customize to your scene. Um, and again, for this render, we don't really need to mess with these too much. Um, but if you're going for like a really high quality render, you, you might want to experiment with these sliders. So um, that's it for render settings. So let's move on to our next step. So I'm gonna open um, the render current frame right here, which is this button right here. We can also, I, I believe, open the render view. It's either of these two buttons. And so the next thing we wanna do is add a denoiser to this. And so to do that, you need to go to Window and then Display Settings. And then it's gonna bring up uh, this, this window right here, this panel. And we're gonna click on this button that says Add Imager. And there's some fun stuff that you can do on this uh, with like some lens effects um, and some other things. But what we're looking for is a denoiser. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. No uh, N O I C E. Just remember nice. You want the nice denoiser right here. And so we're going to click on that and it's going to enable the, de the denoiser. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that when you render a lot of the time in these render settings, there's going to be this noise in your renders. And it's basically, it's, it does a really excellent job of just removing that from your renders. And one thing I'd like to add with the denoiser is when it's turned on, it, sh it should either just be a solid color gray or a solid color blue bar right here. And if you disable it, it's this button right here. And if I disable it, I get the striped gray line right there. And when you disable it, you can see how much heavy lifting that denoiser is doing, right? So you see that grain right there. So that's it disabled. And then I'm going to re-enable it. It'll probably take it a second to recalibrate when I re-enable it. There we go. And so that's what it looks like with the denoiser turned on. And so that difference is pretty big on a still image, but it gets amplified even more when you have an image sequence because those noise grains are jumping all around in an animation and it becomes super distracting. So just always when you're rendering an image sequence, go ahead and turn this on. Now, one reason it didn't make a huge difference in this particular scene is because, let me just close this out, is because in render settings, if I remember correctly, I boosted the camera AA up a level. But if you want really nice renders, just boosting the camera AA up once, and I'm under the Arnold render, and then adding that denoiser, are both work in concert really nicely to, to end up with a really clean render right there. But just keep in mind this one in particular, the camera AA might boost your render time, so just be cognizant of that and be careful that your renders don't take too long. Um, the denoiser is really the most important one, which again, you just go under the Arnold render view, um, and then it's under Window, Display Settings. You go over here, add the imager, and you're looking for N-O-I-C-E right there. And it just adds the denoiser, and the default settings are fine, and you're good to go. And so finally, on to the final step is we want to render our, our image sequence. And so in order to do that, we need to make sure that we go to, we're looking for the render view up here, and I'm under the general workspace and sometimes it shows up sometimes it doesn't for me if you're not seeing render up here in this top bar just under the workspace right here instead of being under general just go under the standard rendering view and now i can go to render and we it, it gives us that tab so we just go to render and then i'm looking for render sequence right here and I always try to click on the settings button just to double check and make sure everything's okay. So render, render setting, sorry, render sequence, and then go to this settings button right here. 
and you mainly just want to make sure that it's rendering from your camera not your perspective view and then we will render a sequence and close and so i'll click that button and from there hopefully your image sequence will start to come out again when you render you want to make sure that you don't have other programs running right your computer is really going to need to focus and concentrate on this and so you know if you have other windows open try to close them like i have chrome running and some other stuff and i should turn those off but so we're going to the project folder and remember this is going to go under images and you can see the image sequence starting to populate remember i named the file demo it's a tiff file and then this is the frame padding right so it's four numbers so zero 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 one and so that makes it so that this opens as an image sequence, which will make it so that when you want to import this into a program like After Effects for compositing, you'll just be able to import it as an image sequence and it'll be really straightforward and simple right here. And so since it's a TIFF sequence, this is kind of an unfinished scene that I'm working on, but you can see that there's some uh, alpha channel coming through. So if I wanted to composite like a sky or something like that behind the scene, I would be able to. And finally, let me show you how to quickly composite or begin to composite this in After Effects. So I have After Effects open. I have my project window, my, my composition window, and my timeline. And I'm just going to go over the absolute basics here. And so to import the image sequence, I ended up only rendering five frames just to save some time. But I go to File, Import, and then File right here. And so I have my five images right there. And so just click on the first one and you should see TIFF sequence or if you rendered PNG, you know, whatever format that you chose, blank sequence right there. And you'll press open and it'll come in. And so here's something that drives me crazy about After Effects is that always when you bring in an image sequence, it comes in at 30 frames per second. Even if you have like multiple compositions set, set up at 24, whenever you bring an image sequence, then it's gonna try to come in at 30 frames per second. And so to fix that, you just click on the image sequence that you brought in. Look for this button right here. It's called interpret footage. And we'll click on that. We can also get the same window if you right click on that and then go to interpret footage. And so we look right here. And so all you need to do is just shift this from 30 to 24. And so from there, I can just create a new composition from this and one way you can do it is I can just click on this button, go to new composition, and then under the presets, choose the one that I want, right? So the very top one, HD 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second looks good. This is set to be, and just always double check that frame rate right there. Um, we have the duration right here. And so this is going to be a very short animation. So I'll set this just to five seconds and background color being black is totally fine. And when you see this checkerboard right here, by the way, if you want to turn that on and off, it's this button right here. It's the transparency grid. So it kind of shows you the alpha channel. And I'll bring in my image sequence, which is really short right there. And you can see since it's a TIFF sequence, I get that alpha channel. So if I want like, you know, stars or something, or clouds in the background, I can composite that in using After Effects here. 